Hi, welcome to Eagle Eye Podcasts. I'm here with the nurse on campus. Hi, I'm Christy Huff. And we're going to be talking about the COVID-19 cases around the world and here in Georgia. This, And I'm also here with Philip from the Eagle Eye, and I'm Sierra. Hey, so I'm going to start the interview. Um, so my first question would be, um, what was the source of the coronavirus? Well, the source of the coronavirus is what um, we've been talking about. It's, it originated in China, and there was an animal market present, and there seems to think that it did come from animal to person, uh, and just by judging the other coronaviruses that were out before this COVID-19, um, they were starting, it started in an animal and then went to people. So now it's actually a person to person um, infection as well. So that was the thought. Sorry to So else. you're talking about COVID-19, which is a name for this exact coronavirus. Um, how deadly is this version of the coronavirus? The strand. This strand is not as deadly as some others that have been in the past. Um, this coronavirus is definitely not um, for younger people, such as yourself here at the university. Um, for healthy people, a lot of them recover, make full recovery. Actually, 60% of all the cases that were confirmed um, have recovered already from the coronavirus. So uh, as far as deadly, it's not as much. Unless you're older than 50 and immunocompromised or if you have underlying health issues, uh, this virus should not be a huge threat. All right, that's great to hear for us students. So what does happen to me? As a, as a young person, if I'm infected by the COVID-19, what are my symptoms? Um, your symptoms, since it's a viral infection, um, you're going to see more than likely sometimes a fever, sometimes. Some people have had the virus without having any symptoms at all, actually. Um, but most uh, prevent with a fever and a dry cough, and they do get short of breath. Um, one physician had posted on um, social media stating that if you could hold your breath and not cough in 10 seconds, then more than likely you could have another type of illness and not the coronavirus. So typically it's going to attack your respiratory cells and it's going to present as a, a pneumonia. So you'll have some fluid buildup in your lungs. Um, but that's in severe cases. So there are some GI issues as well. You could have um, diarrhea that has been seen with some cases. Um, and like I said, other cases, there are no symptoms at all. Okay. They've been tested positive. So it's good to hear for a student that we're probably not going to die, but that, uh, the symptoms are still like not nice to have. So what can I do to prevent an infection and don't get sick at all? Yeah, great question. According to the CDC, they're doing a lot of non-pharmaceutical interventions. That means hand washing as much as possible. Water and soap is the best. Hand sanitizer is good as well, as long as it's 60% alcohol. Um, other interventions is if you have a cough, you know, we are in the middle of flu season as well as allergies are starting to kick up. So, you know, please don't look at your your roommate if she's got a little cough and start freaking out. That's the worst thing that we could possibly do. But um, definitely try not to touch your face and um, wipe down surfaces because the flu can stay on surfaces for a lot longer um, and you know definitely try not to try to avoid being in large large groups you know try to distance yourself from people as much as you can um, that will also help as well and cover your cough if you have a runny nose use a tissue and throw it in the in the garbage wash your hands okay so I know a lot of people are wearing masks but do those like actually help? I know they help with not touching your face in that respect, but like gloves, masks, like 
I know in the most extreme cases I've seen, like, pictures of people wearing, like, hazmat suits. Like, what would you <laughs> say would be the best, like, wearing anything that would help? Yeah. Um, for people that don't have any symptoms at all, don't wear anything at all. Um, for other people who might have a cough, you know, whether it's a dry cough or a productive cough, you know, we do recommend a, a little mask when you're around other people to help prevent that from spreading. But masks aren't proven to, you know, to help out as much as people may think just because, you know, if you take off your mask to eat and you lay it down on the table, then now that mask is exposed to being contaminated. So, you know, the best possible thing to do is just to wash your hands. And if you are sick, stay home and, you know, take care of yourself, listen to your body that way. So. And if we take all these actions, if we wash our hands, if we cover our cuffs, is there a possibility you could, or what's the probability of getting infected? It's very low right now. Um, knock on wood. I mean, it's very low. We, uh, we have no cases here, um, that as to date and today's Thursday. (laughs) So, um, that's a good, good sign. You know, the probability, it depends, I guess if, you know, if you're traveling to a country or if you've been to a country recently with level two or level three, according to the CDC, there is a possibility you could create, you know, have symptoms within two to 14 days of contact with somebody. So, you know, always monitoring your symptoms and, you know, of how your body is feeling is always the go-to for this type of thing. So I know we're talking about the specific COVID-19 strand, but a lot of people have been comparing it to the flu. Um, What are the differences and similarities between the two illnesses? Actually, that's a great question. Looking at the molecular structure of both the flu and the COVID-19 virus, the COVID-19 virus is a single strand RNA, which means that it replicates a lot faster it, um, within your body. And since it's a single strand RNA, every time it replicates, it doesn't have the ability to proofread itself. So it could mutate slightly each time it replicates. So that's what the biggest concern is, is the fact that it it is a hardy virus. It could last on surfaces for quite some time. So we need to make sure we wipe down those surfaces and we stay healthy and mindful of that. As far as the flu, Looking at the flu in contrast to the COVID-19, the flu um, structurally has eight segregated segments within the flu. So it's very much more complex than COVID-19. And um, I think the flu right now is is more deadly, definitely. Um, and it's, it's very more much of a risk as well. Um, you know, a lot of people are are very encouraging students to get their flu shots if they haven't already done so. This will help alleviate a lot of the stress being placed in hospitals and health cares as well. Because the healthier you are, you know, the better off you're going to be. Um, and the less strain we put on our hospitals in our area, the more they're able to help the people who absolutely need, you know, that support from the hospital to get well. Who would you say is in the biggest danger of the COVID-19? I know you said us college students, we have a high probability of, you know, surviving whether or not if it's severe or not, but who is in the biggest threat right right Uh, now? the, The biggest threat they're finding is with the elderly. So, Typically, they're saying around 50, 60 years of age within that frame and having, uh, or if you have cancer or if you're on chemotherapy or if you're a diabetic, um, if you have underlying health issues on top of your age, um, that is the the biggest threat uh, with this virus. 
And I've heard, also heard a lot of people comparing it to the SARS and MERS viruses that have come in the past. Um, what's different from the COVID-19 compared to those two? The COVID-19 is um, more rapid. It's, uh, it's infecting a lot more people, people faster. Um, but they're similar in the fact that they all originated from animals. So, um, that's, that's the biggest difference I would think between those. Okay. Um, I, I was reading a lot on the internet and on different web pages about the flu, the COVID-19, SARS, MERS, all these getting compared. Where can I find really reliable information? Who can we really trust online? Yeah. Great. Um, our go-to person is the CDC. CDC has the best, most reliable, up-to-date information you'd ever want, as well as the World Health Organization. They have some really great information as well. And your local health department website also has updates um, on there. That's really good and reliable information. I'm sure the... Rumor mill is going to get worse throughout the course of this, and um, it's it's good to know where you can get the re most up to date, reliable information. And probably on these web pages, there is nothing to hear about global panic, because in the news media we hear a lot about the panic that is originated by this virus. So, what do you think about this? Like, why are people panicking? What is the source of this? Yeah, um, I think the media has a lot to do with the panic. Uh, I believe that um, people may not be as educated on on this virus as others. Um, I, you know, I believe that you know this is the ugliest part about the virus is this whole panic and hype that it's brought to you know the country. You know, it's not something that we need to take lightly, but at the same time, um, it's not much different than every year having the coronaviruses around and, you know, the flu. So, um, you know, just it's amazing how people are are dealing with this and maybe not in such a healthy way. Um, a lot of mental health issues have arose from this virus as well. So it's, you know, it's, you need to start thinking and educating yourself and making sure that you stay calm because that's the best thing that you can do if you start getting hyped up about it and worried. It's just going to lower your immune system and it's going to make you more susceptible to getting sick, which is what we do not need right now. So I would like to see a lot more support from people. Um, not hoarding items from others um, and helping out the community and especially the elderly staying, you know, staying home from visiting your grandma, maybe just calling her on the phone instead of going to visit. Just to be mindful of others and stop thinking more of ourselves and more of others, I think, um, would be great to see. You know, we... We are uh, a faith-based university here, and um, I believe that, you know, if we stick true and stay strong in our faith, this will help get us through these moments. All right, those are great tips for being here in the United States because, like, that's exactly what we have to do, like, keep calm and just stick to the routine we get from these reliable sources. But to be fair, there are places where you really have to panic because like, for example, in China, if you live in Wuhan, there is nothing anymore, like no economy, no shops, everything's closed. Or for example, Italy, where thousands of people already died. What are some other countries I should not visit or should not go to? Yeah, um, according to the CDC, we have um, South Korea is also on the list. Um, I believe the Philippines are also on the list as well. Um, all the level two and level three countries that are listed, you know, they update the list um, every day on the CDC. So it's very important to go on their website and make sure that we look those countries up before we go and try to visit. 
now it's gotten to the point where a lot of the countries are even locked down and not even accepting people to come. So, And um, I know the U.S., we have the travel ban now that starts tonight or tomorrow night. Yes. Yeah, that, tomorrow, Friday night. Friday night. So, yeah. you know. And I know Americans can come back into the country, but, you know, anybody else that's outside of it's kind of stuck. Exactly. And even those Americans coming in back into our country, we're going to have to screen vigorously if they're coming from an area of high concern. So, um, What's the, the process with these people? With those people to get coming screened? Back. Yes. Yeah, so there's lots of different criteria that we look for. Um, if someone is coming back from, from different countries, it's best, especially if they're coming back from a level two or a level three country, it's good that they self-quarantine themselves for 14 days, whether they're having symptoms or not. Um, they've been susceptible and exposed to a country that has high um, volumes of the coronavirus infection. So, yeah, um, they'll stay home. And hopefully, you know, there's we can't force people to stay home. It's not like we could handcuff them to a chair until 14 days are over, but... We hope everyone's doing their due diligence and doing what is right and to help other people don't get infected and we get a handle on this. And for the people that do have to stay home, what really entails of a self-quarantine? I know not leaving your house, but are there other things you should do around the house? Like, you know, wipe, keep wiping everything, like laundry every day. Like, What are other things you should do at home if you are quarantined? Yeah, definitely. If you are quarantined at home, you would have to wipe down the, you know, the surfaces every day, definitely at the, the least. If you are doing laundry, um, they ask that you don't hug the laundry to your body, that you stick the laundry in baskets and away from your body. Um, they also ask that you just don't leave the house. Um, some of the other things are just to stay in your room, limit contact with people as much as possible, cover your cough and sneeze with your upper arm or a tissue, never cough in the direction of somebody else, wash your hands with soap and water, throw, th throw uh, use tissues in the garbage, um, you know, do not share your drinking glasses, towels, eating utensils, bedding, you know, with other people. So try to keep your surroundings clean, you know, wipe down doorknobs, phones, wash your hands. So those are just some of the things that we could do to stay diligent and keeping everyone from getting the virus. Should you still like say if you have a headache if, and you want to take an Excedrin or a Tylenol, is that okay to treat the symptoms with over-the-counter medicine when you're at home and quarantined or should you just let it do nothing and let it run its course? Like, are those okay? Yeah, over-the-counter medications for symptoms are definitely okay. Um, and we encourage plenty of fluids to flush your whole system out and rest. You know, notice the signs of your body is trying to tell you if, if you're tired, fatigued, do rest. We want you to cough and deep breathe fairly often um, into your, your arm or elbow so that you don't have the pneumonia set in to your chest. Um, try to move around a little bit as much as you can. In the hospital, we ask um, patients during commercial breaks is always a great time. If you're watching TV during a commercial break, cough and deep breathe as much as you can, at least three times, or get up, move around a little bit if you, you're up for it. Um, those are all good things to help with your respiratory system, keeping it healthy. Okay. You talked about people that are already in the hospital they probably get tested on the coronavirus. Um, do you know how these tests look like and if we can tell or if we can trust these tests? Yeah, tests are very reliable because we're looking at the RNA inside of the virus. Um, so that is very reliable. Plus, if you are confirmed case, it had to go through the CDC. So uh, they'll ship those out to the CDC. Um, what it is 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 uh if you were to get tested for this they'll swab your nose um and get a sample that way and they'll ship that off to the lab 
The test itself takes about five to six hours right now for you to have um, a result. But for the patient, for you to be able to get the result, um, probably take at least about 36 hours um, for you to get the result of that. But the test itself only takes about five or six hours. What if you're at home and you're scared to go to a hospital in case you infect other people and you stay at home? Do you just how do you know if you have it if you're there? There's no real way to test for it at the house right now. Um, but if you are sick, we do encourage, and if you don't want to go to the hospital, um, we do encourage that you just stay home and treat it just like any other virus. Drink plenty of fluids. Um, wash your hands, just take care of yourself. But if symptoms do worsen, we ask that you call ahead to the hospital that you're thinking about going to. Let them know your symptoms over the phone and they'll give you exact instructions out on where to go and what to do. Currently, Northside Hospital Cherokee is, they have a separate entrance for suspected coronavirus um, patients that is completely different from the entrance of other people that are looking to go to the emergency department. We're trying to keep them separated so the infection doesn't spread. Awesome. So in China, we heard that it's getting better. Um, what are we expecting here in the Western countries and especially in America? How is the virus going to develop during it, the upcoming month? Is it going to get like really, really bad like it did in China and then get better? Or do you think if we catch it early enough that we can skip the extremely bad yeah, time period? Great question. A lot of people are, are learning from China and we're learning from what they've done to help with the virus. So um, I suspect that the more testing kits that become available the more testing we're going to do with this coronavirus. So you might see a slight rise in the numbers just because of the testing kits are more available for us to use. And then you'll see a plateau and come back down. We're trying to stay ahead of the curve. We're typically, we're about 10 days away from California as far as with the virus growth, things like that. So we're looking at other countries um, for guidance and and we're learning from them and I think I feel like um, we are on a great path and we're doing all necessary things to help with, with the virus from spreading. I, I don't believe it should get really bad. That sounds great. It's very comforting. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. This has been really informational and really calming, and I hope it was calming for anybody listening. Um, thank you for tuning in and see you next time on our next podcast.